It's Your Mother's on the Roof, starring Chachi LaPrette. Join Chachi as he welcomes Noah Wood's own Joseph Gallant, host of the cutting-edge cable program, Not Quite Live, private investigator extraordinaire Dominic Scalizzi, plus more movie reviews by Jay Carr and Janice Timonis, comedy by Snide Clyde, and Elvis news from around the world. Now a man who can tolerate anything except personal opinions, Chachi Lopret. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Your Mother's on the Roof. My name's Chachi. Let me fix my mic. This is Cable. We don't really care. And uh, welcome to the show. It's been two weeks since our last show, but you may have seen us last week on Cambridge. We love everybody at Cambridge Cablevision. Is it Cablevision in Cambridge? I think it's Continental Cablevision in Cambridge. So we have to say hi to everybody there and everybody over at uh, BNN in Boston because we run uh, opposite 60 Minutes, but... No one really watches that trash anyway. And this is Cable, and uh, we have a great show. My name's Chachi. Before we get anywhere, I have a major announcement, okay, Al? A major announcement. You'll be reading this in the papers, but I'm letting people here know tonight. I'm personal friends with Tony Bennett, right? You know that, Clyde? I'm personal friends with Tony Bennett. I know him very well. We hang out all the time. Anyway, we're having brunch this Sunday, just in just two days. This is true. Now, you're laughing. The guy in the audience is laughing because he thinks I'm, I'm lying, but it's true. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be having brunch with Tony Bennett at an uh, undisclosed location, we won't say. And we're going to be discussing my appearance in the next Tony Bennett video. I'll be flying to New York at the end of July, and I'm, I'm going to be playing Tony Bennett's son in this real video, and I get paid for the gig. So, so I ought to get that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, tonight, again, right after the show, I'm going to the Cape Cod in Hyannis. I don't want to be involved with the tall ships at all. And um, also, oh, our producer. We want to say hi to our producer. He's a, he's a great guy, and um, it's a very special day in his life tomorrow. And should we do this now? He, I want to do something for Rob. Rob DeRosa brought this show from the pits, from the, low, the lowest lows. He brought it up to, up to this. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> he's still working at it, uh, but it's going good. Can we get Rob in here? Can we get Rob in here, Karen? Is Rob going to come in here? Do we have that? <laughs> Where is that? Karen. Where is that, the, uh, the, the, the thing, the carrying thing? Okay, well, see, Rob is, he's, there he is, there he is. Okay, here he comes. This is Rob. Rob is our producer, and uh, come on, hold on, hold on. Rob is our producer. Here he comes. Yeah. Rob. Okay, Rob, nice to see you. Rob, is, we brought this for you. Happy, happy birthday, Ooh. Robert. Ooh. Here, get a close-up of that. And also, um, hold on, hold on. I brought you some toys. I brought you a Batman pencil. Uh, with the real Batman thing on it, and uh, also my favorite candy, and I always get this candy. I paid for this too, so uh, my bag of caramel creams. So, oh, also, hey, Bill, look at this. I bought a cake from the official bakery of, of your mother's on the oh, roof, Stevens. I've always Stevens. Stevens, don't do that, <laughs> Stevens. I did forget candles, so if anyone's watching in Norwood, because we're live right now in some cities, bring us candles. We don't have any, we have any candles, but I do, I do love flowers. Mm, yeah. No, don't do that. Oh, okay. No, get it out of here. <laughs> After the show, we'll have a private party. Nobody, of course, at home is invited. So thank you. Happy birthday. You're 29 now, right? That's right. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, well, thank what you very much. There's none of your business. Get out of here. Get out. Get out of here. It's my show. Hey, get out of here. Okay, we got more to do. That's Rob. And um, my co-host, our regular co-host, uh, John O'Neill, is not here tonight. We have no idea where he is. We put out an APB on it, and so we have a great show tonight. We have actually a man that we're going to salute him as a local hero. This guy is a real, uh, a real hero. He has a great career. I got one minute to do this, so I got to do it quickly. He had a great career as a police officer, and uh, he's a retired officer, ranking officer of Cambridge Police Force. He's here tonight. Dom Scalise is here, and so yeah, let's have a hand for Dom. I, I've known Dom Scalise since I was a very, very small uh, kid, and he was a great police officer, did a lot for, for Cambridge, and we're really proud to have him on the show. We're going to salute him tonight, because that's what he deserves. He's a, he's a great guy. Also, we have Joe Gallant. You may remember Joe. He used to be a regular on the show, but now he's an irregular on the show. And uh, he's, he's here tonight to talk about his new show and all that. There he is right there. He's a cameraman, but he'll be on later. Okay. Also, we have, uh, in addition to a beautiful woman, a couple of beautiful women in the audience, uh, we do have movie reviews from Jay Carr and Janice Timonis and Elvis News and lots of great stuff. We'll be right back. This is Your Mother's on the Roof. We have to go to commercial.
Kathy, you must always remember that hitting is not acceptable. You're bigger, you're stronger. Don't hit. Whenever you feel yourself getting angry, you take time out. You know what time out is. You cool off, and keep yourself from doing something you're going to be sorry for later. Do you understand? Well, do you? Take time out. Don't take it out on your child. Want to know how to turn your kid off to school? Want to really make us not care about learning anything? Tell me you got to school with no help from your parents that all have to do the same. When the teacher invites you up for a talk, don't show. Keep on saying girls are no good at math. That'll turn me off. Face it, when parents don't care, kids don't care. Then they don't learn. Show me a parent who really cares, and I'll show you a kid who can learn. In an emergency when seconds count, we're trained to look for Medic Alert's emblem. A call to Medic Alert's emergency center gives us vital information about conditions, medicines, physician, and family. Information that helps us give fast, accurate treatment that saves lives. Millions worldwide depend on Medic Alert protection. To learn more, ask your pharmacist or call 1-800-ID-ALERT. That's 1-800-ID-ALERT. Last year, thousands of innocent children were caught in the crossfire of violent crime. And it's not just the children who suffer. How much longer will you let this go on? Call this number now. We'll send you information on how you can protect your children from crime and drugs in your neighborhood. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. Chacho Lepre, I'd like to introduce the man who's sitting to my left, you're right. He's been with me for the last 45 years. He chooses all my songs, Clyde Whalen. Hi, Clyde. Nice to see you. Thank Welcome you. to the show. Thank you. I brought you this yeah. apple. Really? I love apples. So your it's reference... It's so warm. Where has this apple been? You've been holding on it really tight. Will somebody wash that, and then I will eat it. Okay. You stepped on the punch. Oh, I did? I was supposed to say, I brought you the apple so your efforts wouldn't be entirely fruitless. Oh. Is that the punch? <laughs> Give me that apple bag. No, I'm only kidding. Leave it, leave it. But I do want to get it washed because I haven't had anything nutritious in like three years to eat. Always peel the apple. It's good to see you. You're filling in for John O'Neill. I hope you fill his shoes. Well, he's got pretty big feet. Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, I do want to say one thing. And I said to my heart, as it foolishly kept jumping all around, I got lost. But look what I found. Tonight's show is dedicated to Mr. Tony Bennett. Thank you very much. Isn't that nice? Thank you. I'm glad to hear you. <laughs> glad to hear you having a, you're making a, a this would be a big deal anyway, for you. Anyway, this is a big deal. But listen, we have a bigger deal. We have a hotline number. Yes. This hotline number could win you, <clears throat> could win you a pair of lawn seats. And they're not regular seats. Okay, lawn tickets. But these tickets are big. A pair of tickets to see Eric Clapton. What you have to do is call this phone number, 576-8881. You see it on your screen there. It's right right there. And uh, call that number. Leave your name and address and your phone number. And then um, July, uh, is it July? No, August like 10th or 18th, 9th maybe. We're going to announce the winner. <laughs> something like <laughs> it's something like that. But you leave your name and address on that message machine, and you'll be in the drawing for a pair of Eric Clapton tickets at Greatwoods. It's the biggest show of the year. You probably don't know who Eric Clapton is, but he is, uh, he's related to Bobby Vinton. I know Bobby Vinton. <laughs> I know. That's why I said that. No, he is not related. Anyway, we have a cool show tonight. Uh, we want to tell you about our hotline. Uh, in addition, we have this uh, video, a stoop goofy, goofy pet video thing that we're doing. I don't know why I'm telling him, but anyway, uh, you, you call the number if you have a goofy pet video. Send it to this address. Can we put that on the screen, too? i got so much business to take care of before we get to the show. It's coming up, and uh, it's at uh, WBCN Care of Box 104. There it is. Boston, Mass. Send us a video of your pet, and we'll play it on TV. And then somewhere later in the video, put on something a little private for me to watch at home later when I get there. Okay, so... <laughs> God. What else do we got to do? Clyde, so what, what else? Uh, we got a joke along coming up? Should we do Joe Gallant? What else is going on? Anything? 
Well, I, uh, I was uh, looking forward to seeing Joe. He hasn't been here for quite a while. Oh, thank God. Hmm? Thank God. Did you oh, have any I stories or anything? He's to tell very us or talented. You always come with a story. Well, yeah, I have one. Yeah. About about this guy who uh, he sees in the paper that somebody's looking for a handyman. So he comes in and he says, "I'm your man, sir." He says, "What do you have me do?" So the guy says, "Well, you will you take those bricks up and give them to the bricklayer?" He says, oh, "I'd love to do that for you, sir." He says, but I have a terrible bad back. If that car was carrying me wife across the threshold the day we got married, and I strained me back, can't do it. Would you give me something else to do? And the guy says, okay. He says, take those boards up the ladder to the carpenter. Oh, he says, I'd love to do that for you, sir, but I'm terrible afraid of height. He says, I get a nosebleed standing on a thick rug. He says, is there something else you'd have me do? He says, uh, well... How about taking the, those wires up to the electrician? He said, well, I'd love to do that for you, sir, but he said, a terrible traumatic shock. My father was a lightning rod salesman. He got caught out in a terrible storm in the middle of a field. I never got over it. He said, there's something else you'd have me do. The guy says, well, you're supposed to be a handy man. What's so handy about you? He said, well, I live just right around the corner. There's well, something there you go. There. Very good. Thank you. That was good. And there's a degree of humor that you'll see on the show tonight. We'll, never, we'll probably reach that plateau. Well, I, maybe I need an interpreter. Maybe you do. Anyway, you, you will for the next segment. Hey, this is Your Mother's on the Roof, and our next guest has been associated with the show for a good five or ten years. And is, No, actually, we're only, we've only been on for six years, so a good five years. He is known very well in the Norwood streets. And uh, he has his own TV show on Norwood Cable. Don't say anything until I introduce you. Don't say a word. <laughs> God, why do I got to sit in between these two people? Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Gallant. <laughs> Hi, Joe. How you doing? What's Joey! Up? He's over here. No. <laughs> Joe, you're supposed to be on your camera. There he is. Oh, OK. Well, now I the video. Welcome back to Not Quite Live. And now I'm going to try doing an old Sam and Dave number, which I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but tonight it was later done by Dan Eckley and John Belushi in the Blues Brothers. I'm gonna try my Sam and Dave version of this. Coming to ya on a dusty road. Good loving. I got a tuck low. And when you get it, you got something. Don't worry, because I'm coming. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. Yes, I am. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. Ta 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 ta. Got what I got the hard way. I got to make each and every day. So, honey, stay it on feet. <laughs> Cause you ain't seen nothing yet, no. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. I'm a soul man. You actually liked it? I thought it was atrocious. It was dumb. It was stupid. Do you want me to do more of this stuff? I was educated at Woodstock. When I start loving, oh, I can't stop. Because I'm a soul
since you, we were unable to set up that clip, let me explain that on a recent edition of my show, we had a karaoke contest, but the gang in the control room, as I refer to the crew of my show, demanded that I do a karaoke number before the contest began. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the viewers who came down to the studio to do their karaoke bits were far more talented than me. There's some things that I could do well, but singing is not one of them. Well, you are quite modest, but I think you have a great voice, and I think Mr. Bennett wants to hear from you next week. That's all I need. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Gallant. What's the name of your TV show? Not quite live. Okay. We call it that because it's shown in Norwood and Westwood on Tuesdays. We usually tape it Thursdays. Okay, and I was on that show, and I had a delightful time on that show. In fact, we hope that you'll be on again, because right now, as we tape this episode of Mothers of the Roof, we're on a production break, but early August we'll be back taping. I hope you'll be on the show when we come back. I'm afraid I can't. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, I will come on your show, but please have some more refreshments. And where'd you get that studio audience? I mean, how well, they called the Norwood Cable Studio, although some of them were people who later in the show appeared in the karaoke contest. Oh, okay, so that was not quite alive, and you can see it. Is that it? At, in Norwood and Westwood. Is that, only. No, what's the name of the show? Not, it is not quite live. Oh, not quite live. Okay. Anyway, did you ever see a show, Clyde? Never have it. It's a phenomenal show. I think it breaks <laughs> new TV ground. I think all should watch it. I think he's a very bright guy. Do you really? Well, have I you see. ever met him? Joe, this is Clyde. Clyde, this is Joe. Hello, Joe. Heard a lot about you. I guess you've been in the business for enough years. I've heard you're one of the living legends. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. This is crazy. 576-8881. Give us a call on our phone line because we want to talk to you and you get a chance to win Eric Clapton tickets. Now, Joe, you you were on the show for many, many years here. And you had a segment called... Match Wits. Match Wits with Joe Gallant. Now, anyone in the studio audience would like to ask Joe a question, we can play a little mini uh, round of match wits with Joe. You can ask any question about anything. The presidency, what are you good at, sports? Mostly general knowledge. It's general a segment knowledge. that I did actually until the time I started Not Quite Live a year ago. Just I got so busy doing that. But honestly, Chachi, while waiting to come on, I was watching the Olympics, and right now I guess there's a medal ceremony going on in Barcelona, it looks like. As usual, the U.S. is cleaning up with the medals, and thankfully, no one from the Commonwealth of Independent States has won any medals yet today. Well, thank you. Is that true? Look at this. Elvis Presley just walked in. Take a look. Take a look at the camera. Hey, Elvis, nice to see you. Unbelievable. I was going to ask him a question. How old is H. Ross Perot? Okay. There's, I there's think H. Ross Perot is, I believe he turned 62 his last birthday, which was just a few short weeks ago. It was on the 27th of June, I believe, was his birthday. That's amazing. How much? He says he's 57. Congratulations, you're right. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Um, I would like to know, in a wind instrument, how many reeds are there? Six. Six, that's right. Unbelievable. <laughs> and just for answering that question correctly, Joe, we have a pair of tickets for you. <laughs> read those tickets. Joe, you want a pair of tickets. Sleep. I'll read them. You can't read them. <laughs> We're going to give you a pair of tickets to Great Woods to see the Canadian Brass Quartet on July 19th, my birthday. Your birthday? You know it's Happy my birthday, birthday well, thank Chachi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And also, we should note, and I hope I'm not overrunning Rob the Rose's already, but it's been four full years since Chachi Repet's been the host of your mother's roof. I think it deserves a round of applause. <laughs> he took over the show in July of 88. Oh, okay, but I think what you have to remember is that I did the show for two years before that, but as a co-host. That's right. So I'm just going to four the, years no, as you just, star of the show. You were just throwing those two years away like I didn't even exist. So I think you should say I was here for a total of six years. Yes, you've been here since the beginning, but as host, the star of the show, the one everyone tunes in to watch. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, have you ever seen Clyde Whalen do his BNN show? No, because unfortunately I live here in Norwood and his BNN bit is only available in Boston, although sure. who knows, maybe he may want to edit together a best of Clyde Whalen commentary and maybe it can run on cable systems throughout the region. Actually, That's even here. Maybe yeah. I can con my boss Paul Norton into running a best of Clyde Whalen bit here if you edit it together, Clyde. Right. They can't, can't do that. Oh, they go three or four minutes. They can't do that because he wears that hat. His hat's not allowed on Boston cable TV. So anyway, here's, here's, here's your, here's your uh, concert tickets. I know you'll enjoy that. And tell Thank us about you. how many, what kind of people have you had on your show? You've had some real celebrities. Believe it or not, we've had a number of people from many different walks of life, ranging from local politicians to sports coaches to owners of shops that deal with popular memorabilia to psychics. 
to Chachi Lepret and many now, other how people. How do you get the, you know, how, about, how about the guy who did Norwood history? Remember him? Yes, Ed Knolick. He's an author who wrote a book called South Dead of Massachusetts. That's the earliest we what is now Norwood, before Norwood became a separately incorporated town. He was a very interesting guest. In fact, I'm hoping to get him back in the near future to talk about Norwood right after it became a separately incorporated town. Well, you should probably get him during the sweeps, because you really need a guy like that on during the sweeps. It's anyway. an amazing thing, he never <laughs> stops to breathe. <laughs> Who had to like or me? <laughs> no, no, no he, he, he is so certain of what he's going to say, he just goes on. I know, he's great. Ask him any mechanical. question. If you have a studio I'd like audience, to Chris, ask him a question? a question. Well, okay, well, Chris has a question. We'll start with Chris. Chris, what's your question? Does a paper um, printed a false winner in an election? What was the election? Who lost and what was the paper? His question okay. was, which newspaper printed a false report about a presidential election? Which paper? Which election? There's two, but I think the one he wants was in 1948 when the Chicago Tribune erroneously reported that <laughs> New York Governor Tom Dewey had defeated incumbent President Harry Truman. It was a very close race. No one really knew for a couple of days who won. Okay. Okay, we have another studio audience member who would like to ask a question. I have a question. It's a two-part question. Okay. Okay. How many people are buried in the Mount Auburn Cemetery? How many people are buried in the Mount Auburn Cemetery? I'm going to say a rough guess, 5,400. Am I close? All of them, but what are their names? <laughs> What are the <laughs> what are their names? No, My pro our producer say. Rob DeRosa took a toe <laughs> saying we'll have to answer that at a later time. We don't That's have a great the time. question. Okay, we have we have thirty seconds left. Do you have a quick thirty second question? Do I have a quick yeah, question? Yeah, yes. I'd like to know how he speaks so fluently, how he came about that. Well, believe it or not, there was a woman who used to work here back when Cable first came to the road named Marsha Dudding, and she taught me <laughs> most of what I know about how to be in front of a television camera. And there you go. There you so, go. And if I be, can be allowed to, viewers watching us here in Norwood and Westwood can see Not Quite Live Tuesdays at 7, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. on Cable Channel 32. You may want to watch on August 11th because right now we're in reruns, but August 11th we'll be back with our first show of our second year the on the air. Who's one of the guests? In well, who knows, might be Chachi LaPrette. If he's not doing anything tonight, we tape the show. Sure, we need some good guests. We're gonna ask, I'll ask Laura and see if I'm available. Anyway, uh, we want to thank you for coming on the show. We have to go to a commercial. Uh, before you go, I need Julie to, well, anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> sure, better you, anything, we talk we, we about go. off the air. We'll be right back. We have uh, more stuff coming up just straight after this message. Hey, hard work. Good work. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Gail Fee. And I'm Laura Raposa at the Boston Herald's Inside Track. And you're watching Your Mother's on the Roof with Chachi Lopretch. and pedals and pumps his way through a demanding workout routine almost every day. But Bo's biggest lift comes long after his workout's over. Bo? Jackson? Knowing that nearly 5 million children in hospitals all over the country are being helped through the Children's Miracle Network is enough to give anyone a lift. The Children's Miracle Network. It's working wonders. Okay, people. Your assignment today is very simple. Make this earth as beautiful as possible. Any questions? Get started. <laughs> Does anyone know where Lisa is? Yeah, I do. Do a good turn for the earth.
community service thought from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thousands of innocent children were caught in the crossfire of violent crime. How much longer will you let this go on? Call this number now. We'll send you information on how you can protect your children from crime in your neighborhood. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. Give me now. Well, welcome back to Mothers on the Roof. We are the cable station that's sweeping the neighborhood, or the cable TV show that's sweeping the neighborhood. We are shown in 800,000 households and uh, just a few people watch. But we do contribute to what's good on cable TV by running those fabulous public service announcements during our commercial breaks. Isn't that correct, Clyde? That is absolutely correct, Thank your you lordship. Aegon, <laughs> filling in for John O'Neill tonight. And uh, we just had Joe Gallant, a special guest on the show. Now, Joe's a good guy. He has his own TV show, but I know when he uses my computer, and it really makes me mad. I always know when he's using it because I always find whiteout on the screen. He's always trying to wait up. Anyway. <laughs> He's unbelievable. That's that guy, Joe Gallant. And anyway, tonight's show, Your Mother's on the Roof, is sponsored by that new food sensation, chicken pox pie. Yes, chicken pox pie. People are just itching to get it. I love that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We Clyde have a new insecticide. We do. Yeah. It makes the flies romantic, and you can hit them two at a time. What's it called? It's called wacko. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, 576-8881. Leave your name and address and phone number, and you'll be eligible for our big Eric Clapton giveaway. You'll get a pair of lawn tickets. We're going go to the, we're use the seats for ourselves. We'll get lawn tickets. If your name is selected by our crack staff here, you'll get lawn tickets to see Eric Clapton. So call that number, 576-8881. Leave your name, address, and phone number. And right now, we have our new segment on the show. We, I don't want these people on the show, but they insist on coming back. And uh, <laughs> Anyway, here they are, reviewing all those fabulous movies that you just love to pay 20 bucks to see. Here they are, Janice Chimonis and our good friend from the Boston Globe, Jay Carr. Here we are back again. This is Janice Timonis, and I'm Jay Carr. Uh, we're going to inflict ourselves upon you with the help of Hollywood. Uh, we're going to talk about three movies today. The first is A League of Their Own, the Gina Davis, uh, Tom Hanks Madonna movie, Boomerang, the new Eddie Murphy movie, and Poison Ivy, a uh, nice little B movie starring Drew Barrymore. I didn't see and any we'll of start with, well, that's what I was hoping. Okay. And we'll start with uh, A League of Their Own. Batter number 32, second baseman. Marla Pooch. Marla! Easy out, easy out. What are you, stupid? Somebody's got to run the team, Jimmy. You know, someone who actually watches the games. You're going to squeeze butt with our best hitter? What's the sign of swimming away? Hey, blonde girl! What's the sign? Swing away. It's the letters. The infield's deep. A squeeze will work. Stop thinking when you're tits. You want a big inning. You're better! Time! Good performances all around. There we saw Gina Davis, Tom Hanks playing Jimmy Dugan, and uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Um, 
We only have a few minutes to discuss this, so I think I'll get right to the point. I loved this movie. Um, one of the things we didn't see in that clip that I thought was the most interesting character, uh, person I thought was the most interesting character was Laurie Petty, who plays Gina Davis's younger sister. In point of fact, she's a fictional character. Uh, the, the woman portrayed by Gina Davis didn't have a younger sister in that league, but her character is, is is strong and and fun. Also, it's interesting. Madonna is very refreshing, and it's good to see her in an ensemble. I think um, more rather than standing out on her own, making a celebrity of herself. And she plays mm. she plays very well. Yeah, this is absolutely not the Madonna show. That's one of the good things about yeah. the movie. Yeah. Uh, Gina Davis is probably first among equals. I mean, you can not only build a ball team around this woman, you can build a country around this woman. She's got this wonderful pioneer strength. Uh, and all the good baseball movies, they have, they have history and they have heart. Uh, this is history. There really was a women's mm -hmm. league. Uh, you know, one doesn't like war, but during the war, there was a man shortage, and that meant women got a chance to do a lot of things they weren't permitted to do, playing professional baseball being one of them. Uh, so it's based on fact. And another thing I liked about these women, these women can really play ball. If they couldn't play ball to start with, they really trained, they really worked, uh, and they learn how to play ball. They've got the right moves. They don't just prance on the field starting to hit home runs. Uh, they look like ball players, and they throw themselves into it. It's a very heartfelt movie. Tom so this, Hanks, so Tom Hanks was at a baseball game the other day, <laughs> yeah. and he actually, uh, someone, one of the players missed a catch, I guess. Yeah. He actually said, was overheard saying, Madonna could have caught that. <laughs> and she would have, too. She's a very hardworking woman, and, and her wish to be taken seriously as an actress uh, will go a lot further mm -hmm. as a result of this mm -hmm. movie, because mm -hmm. she really does uh, play a role. She's it's not the Madonna show at all. Mm -hmm. And the next clip uh, we're going to see now that we've seen A League of Their Own, is Boomerang, the new uh, Eddie Murphy movie. Gerard's mother brought us a whole trough of chitlins. Oh, oh chitlins. yo, I want a bowl. <laughs> this the little girl you've been talking about? Agatha? Angela. Angela Lewis. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. <laughs> nice to meet you. Isn't she pretty? Yeah. She looked like one of Marcus' girls. Hey, 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 well, hey, Agatha, why don't you go in the kitchen and help Miss Jackson with these chitlins? Go on, you go in the kitchen. Oh, you be back. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to Mrs. Jackson. Mrs. Jackson, hey, come here, man. Yeah, so good to see good you. Good seeing you, Every boy. year, you do something new. Now, where'd you get the mushroom shirt? I'm trying to impress you, you know that. I know. Yeah. Now, where'd you get the mushroom shirt? I got to know. Well, the secret is, you've got to coordinate. Uh-huh. Most people don't coordinate. See, you got to coordinate. Yes, that's what you did. Yeah. Now. Interesting. See, I told you they don't stink when you pull the membrane out. Mama. See, when you saw me, you saw the mushroom I shirt. Mushroom shirt. Bang. Mushroom shirt. Mushroom shirt. shirt. But see, you can't stop with the mushroom shirt. You now, I would go on. I would stop the no, shirt. No, you got to keep going. Okay. Now, let me show you something. Look at that. Oh, you got it. Mushroom belt. Gerard, did you know your pops had a mushroom belt on? Yes. But you don't stop there, see? No, you gotta you keep going. What you got? Mushroom ring? Yes, good idea. Look what I got. The <laughs> Gerard! Well, there, this is the new Eddie Murphy movie, Boomerang. There are two things going on here image repair and, and employment for blacks. Uh, is it his best movie? No. Trading Places was better, 48 Hours was better, Beverly Hills Cop was better, but it's a step in the right direction. Eddie Murphy's made a string of pretty bad movies. Uh, his status had been dropping. He had allowed sexist stuff to creep into some of these last few movies, and the guy had to do a job of image repair. He finally started listening to people who had been telling him this, and this is the first step uh, you know, in that direction. It's not a great picture, but, but it does represent a bit of a turnaround for him. He plays a ladies' man uh, in a, a business setting, and he, this time, he, uh, he's the one starts out high and mighty, but he gets skunked by Robin Givens, who's you know, higher and mightier than, uh, than he is. Uh, so again, not, not, not great, but OK, he's starting to come around. That's how I felt. Not great, but OK, a ladies' man. What ladies? <laughs> Sexist in other movies? <laughs> the women in this movie, first of all, are stupid and useless and very sexy. Uh, I have to disagree with Jay. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a horrendous film. I didn't think it was funny at all because it wasn't funny. There was one outside, it was one about a, a maybe 10 second bit at, a, at the box office. In fact, it was so perceptible that many of the actors in this film were embarrassed to deliver their own stupid lines. That they, you could see that Robin Givens, who I think is probably quite a competent actress and will become more, even more so in the future, couldn't even look Eddie Murphy in the eye when she was delivering those stupid lines. And there's continuity problems. I mean, she makes a big point about showing up at his apartment only for a business meeting. Of course, she shows up in 
without a briefcase though, <laughs> in those skin tight pants, it was, um, I think Eddie Murphy needed to pay some bills. The next movie we are going to look at is the relatively new Drew Barrymore film with Cheryl Ladd and, and Sarah Gilbert. It's called Poison Ivy, and I think we have a clip. What are you busted for? Uh, I gotta keep a certain grade point average. I'm slipping in biology. My name's Sylvie Cooper. Like most 15-year-olds, what Sylvie Cooper wanted more than anything else was a best friend. Everybody hates me. Oh, well, everybody hates me, too. Do you want us to come over? Someone to talk to. Wow, this is great. Someone to understand her. Oh, Ivy, this is my mom, Georgie. Till death. Someone like Ivy. It's nice and cool in here. Um, I missed my ride. No. Dad, she's my best friend. But Ivy didn't just want a friend. Ivy wanted more. I hope that when I die, I'll have owned a sports car. I had a family. A home. And she'd do anything to get it. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Care for anything? It's interesting and I think quite relevant that uh, the clip that we've just shown was a promotional clip because I thought one of the an interesting aspect of this film was it was promoted inappropriately in a way. It looks like it's a big, deep mystery movie when in fact it's a small film. It's almost like a case study of a curiosity. It's like a, it's a, it's a what if. A sea of possibilities. Good performances all around. Surprisingly good, um, by the way, performance by Cheryl Ladd. Proving that it was very, she was playing a very selfless and not a very attractive role, and I think she 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 proved herself as a almost like an undermining. Uh, yeah, she was she, she was willing to, to undercut herself. Mm -hmm. The charm of this movie and this the, this summer's parade of would be blockbusters is that this is a small, unpretentious, trashy little B movie that doesn't pretend to be anything more than an unpretentious little trashy B-movie. For that reason, it's fun. Drew Barrymore actually succeeds in playing the kind of brassy, blonde, street-smart hustler that Madonna sort of tries to play in kids uh, up until a league of their own. It's a great performance by Drew Barrymore. Uh, and Sarah Gilbert, smart girl Sarah Gilbert, I mean, in real life, like mm. Jodie Foster, she's just been admitted to Yale. She's going to study psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Gilbert is very good as a little rich girl, the lonely rich girl into whose house Drew Barrymore insinuates herself and takes over. Uh, Poison Ivy, not a great movie, great showcase for Drew Barrymore, very recommendable. Mm, you keep using the word trashy. I thought it was much less trashy. Um, I really respected the atmosphere that this movie set. It hinted at a deep, dark evil that would never actually happen. And that era of mystery, I thought, made the film a really successful experience. I would recommend it highly. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to send you back to Chachi, and we're going to shut up now. And we'll be back probably in a few weeks if, uh, against everyone else's will. Hollywood and weather permitting, yeah. <laughs> weather will and permit, you, but and, we'll, and we'll, you we'll. permitting. <laughs> Boy, aren't those two the sweetest couple? They are, they are unbelievable. They should definitely get a room. They're J. Carr, Janice Timonis, reviewing the latest films. And uh, coming up in just a few minutes, we have a man who's dedicated his life to the police force. He's a, he's a real hero, a real Cambridge man. We're going to bring him on, and we're going to salute him and uh, dedicate this entire show to him, because he's a, he's a great guy. He's going to be on in just a second, Dom Scalise. But first, we have the news that is much more important than anything available, anything around. Elvis news from around the world. <laughs> Oh, they lost the Elvis news. Maybe it's at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> Did they lose the... <laughs> okay. They lost the and now, the latest Elvis news from around the world.
Las Vegas, Nevada. The ghost of Elvis is still performing in Las Vegas, according to Mr. Showbiz, Wayne Newton. Wayne says he feels the spirit of Elvis on stage when he works at the Hilton in Las Vegas. Strange going-ons have made a believer of Wayne Newton, who says on several occasions, lights have suddenly gone off, and stage monitors have shut down and then mysteriously come back on. Recently, while Wayne was shooting a music video for the song The Letter, which is based on a letter Elvis wrote while in his Vegas hotel room, a fan swore he saw Elvis in the balcony. It startled him so much he had a mild stroke and was rushed to the hospital. Here is an excerpt from Elvis's letter. Help me, Lord. I feel so alone sometimes. The night is quiet for me. I'd love to be able to sleep. Everyone is gone now. I'll probably not rest tonight. Help me, Lord. Elvis Presley, December 1976, just months before his passing. The memory of the king still lingers on. A new TV movie based on the book Graced Land stars Tom and Roseanne Arnold. It begins shooting next month. Roseanne plays a welfare mother with two daughters, Priscilla and Lisa Marie, who transforms her front porch into a shrine, sacred to the memory of Elvis. Through tough economic times, she overcomes her obstacles and reigns victorious, with the help of Elvis, of course. I'm John O'Neill for Elvis News from Around the World. Join us again next time for the latest Elvis News from Around the World. Dad's got an idea, a way to get rid of all the grody garbage that's polluting the world. He's invented a big rocket ship to shoot all the garbage into outer space. Mom's not sure, but Dad says his invention will save the world. There's an easier way to save the world. Recycle. For your free recycling action guide, write Recycle. Environmental Defense Fund, 257 Park Avenue South, New York, New York. We have the test results. And we're sure of the diagnosis. Jerry has cancer. Oh, God. We have very good treatment for this form of cancer, but it's not going to be easy. We're going to start chemotherapy immediately. Chemo, but he's always been so active. We'll try to keep his life as normal as possible. We'll go in, and I'll tell Jerry what I've told you. Please give generously to the Jimmy Fund. Cancer is too big a battle for a kid to fight alone. There's hardly a corner of the world where a Peace Corps volunteer is making a difference right now. You can join them. They're opening hearts and opening minds, building bridges and bridging cultures, sharing skills and sharing themselves, bringing new life to deserts and fighting disease. The Peace Corps is leaving behind more than a new crop, a new forest, or a nourished child. It's leaving behind the people you've helped to help themselves, shaping their future as well as your own. No matter what your skill, you don't know how much you have to offer until you offer it. Take home a world of experience and leave behind something that will last for generations. Peace Corps, the toughest job you will ever love. So we are your mother's on the roof. While we're doing the show, we also have the TV on for the Olympics, and we're watching the triple cast of the TV. Mm. Isn't that great? I'm sitting here with Clyde, my Very famous well. co-host for the evening. John O'Neill is out, but Clyde, the Mr. Phipps of cable TV. Nice Phipps, to see you, Phipps. Mr. That's Cookie. I don't, I don't know whether anything. I've been. Anyway, I'm welcome back to your mother's on the roof. Compliment. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> we're back with your mother's on the roof. My main man, Clyde. Our next guest. I've known him since I was a young young child. I was always afraid of him as a kid because he was a policeman, and I always thought, you know. He's a big guy. But he's so. a, he, you, you, policemen are your friends, and they're really nice people, and there's nothing different about a cop. It's just that his work, I mean, when you're a cop, life is kind of different. But you wouldn't system. know. It's what a system, doing? of course. Yes, he's dedicated his, his life to the police force and to Cambridge, and he's done a lot of things for the people of Cambridge. Dom Scalise. Let's have a hand here for Dom. <laughs> Unbelievable. Nice to see you, Don. My pleasure, man. Unbelievable. This guy, I used to be a small child, and this guy was a 
big cop, and uh, he did a lot for, for the city of Cambridge. And Before we go anywhere, Dom, can you read me my rights? Yeah, you have a right to remain silent. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say is going to be used against you. <laughs> Your father says you haven't talked at all in the house for the last four years. So he was glad you, he's glad that you uh, observed the, your rights. Yes, and I've, Dom knows my dad. and We've we actually were brought up together. Brought up together. Uh, he was brought up with my dad, and he lives right across the street, for, right across the corner from uh, where I grew up. And uh, Dom, you've done a lot. You've, you've, what's it like to be a policeman? Well, being a policeman, I think, is about one of the greatest things in the world that I found it to be one of the greatest things uh, next to being married to my wife for 43 years. 43 years. I, yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. Smart. I've been, a, I've been a policeman for 41 years, uh, 10 months and 11 days, and I found it to be a very interesting job. I liked it very much, and what makes the job a lot easier is when the people in the communities uh, are aware of the laws and they help you out by abiding by the laws and they try to bring their kids up to respect law and order also. If the family has no respect for a police officer, the kids sure as heck will not have any respect for them either. And uh, like Larry says, I call him Larry. He knew me before I was charging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all the kids in our neighborhood were good kids. We never heard of crime in our, in our particular location because we came from a pretty good division. There was a div uh, a very diversified uh, uh, neighborhood. We had all walks of life and everybody had separate jobs, but the job I chose was something I've always wanted to be. I used to play cops and crooks with your father, and when we were kids... Uh, who was the crook? My your daddy. father. Because <laughs> your father was so tough. He always wanted to be the bad guy. He wanted to be James Cagney. <laughs> and uh, he could run like heck. We never could catch him. Really? One day we played cops and crooks, you know, we let him go and hide. We were having a cookout. So we let him go and hide. So we finished the cookout. <laughs> Two hours later, he wanted to know how come we didn't go look for him. <laughs> we had all kinds of food. But uh, it's a very interesting thing. <laughs> how, how did you become a policeman? I mean, when did you realize that you wanted to be a cop? I <clears throat> actually wanted to be a cop when I was a kid. 1942, I joined the Marines. Wow. Your father joined it. Two months later, I met him down at Paris Island. And then uh, we, wrote, we wrote to each other during the war, and uh, we went different directions. And uh, then I came back from the Marines in April of 46, and my father says, why don't you go back to college? I decided to go to college, but then I don't know if you remember the semi-pro football team we had up there. And no. I was going to Newman Prep, and I broke an ankle playing football, so I didn't go back to college. So I picked the next best thing to being a cop is hard work. I worked in a foundry for about uh, <coughs> two and a half years, and my father says, did I tell you when you see a shovel and a pitchfork, run? Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> I said, you know, I really want to be a policeman. I uh, got tired of guns before, but I decided to be a policeman, and I took the exam, and I was appointed, and I liked it. I was a detective uh, for 24 years, and the last 10 years of my profession, I, I was a director at the police academy, and uh, I enjoy that very much too. Well, in the police academy, I, uh, I, uh, I instructed on defensive tactics. I've been certified for defensive tactics, firearms, criminal law, and CPR. And uh, I tried my best, but a good police officer, you have to be dedicated mm -hmm. to the city. And you know that they come first, the people. We cannot abuse any privilege that's given to us. Mm -hmm. I don't like a wimp on the job. and. There are several wimps I noticed throughout the country on the job, but I think Cambridge, without a doubt, is like you said, Willie Wilson. I'd like to, uh, <laughs> Willie Wilson, that it is one of the greatest jobs in Cambridge, without a doubt. We are, we are the best. Yeah, the Cambridge and Police Department is great. The best police department. I figure that even though I retired uh, in December, that I still am a police officer and I'd always be a police officer. Can I ask right a question there? Uh, do, you become <laughs> do you become cynical? Did you ever become cynical at your job about people? Like how? Well, that's what I mean. Did you ever feel, hey, what's the use? No. Figured we have to dedicate more time to them. If we feel that a person, you couldn't uh, resolve anything, that we continue working on a person and try to help the person out. Wow. Mm. Okay, well, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Dom Scalise, and we have a presentation for him. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Yes.
and play it again. Right after this message. If you need yes. information on money, I do. health and nutrition, yes. educating your That's children me. and more, then you need the government's free consumer information catalog. Just give me the address. Send your name and address to New Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Oh, ink. The free catalog lists publications on getting a job, exercising, buying a home, and much more. Getting your free consumer information catalog and free sample booklet is as easy as sending your name and address to New Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. The free catalog will give you access to hundreds of government publications, many of which are free. For those of you who missed it, that address again... New catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. I got it. I got it. The free consumer information catalog. First class information for the price of a first class stamp. Yes. She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. She is making a difference in the nation's war on drugs. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seized several tons of crack and marijuana, and closed down 10 major drug operations in her area. She is a 68-year-old grandmother. Her name is Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is changing her neighborhood. She did it for a lot of reasons, but the two most important ones are beside her. There are many ways to help in your community. To find out how, call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. Really let me now. Oh, 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 and I know. With uh, Clyde Whalen and my uh, good friend, uh, a retired police uh, ranking officer, Dominic Scalise. Clyde, did you have a question? I just wanted to match my hand with oh, his. Oh, God. Just to show you the difference between a guy that works. Get a <laughs> the hand of the law. Yeah. The hand of the law. <laughs> anyway, Dom, you've, That's you've, something, you've had it? a great career. You've done so much. I mean, you've, you, you cracked up some major cases in Cambridge, one that, uh, that some people in Cambridge would know about, a, a friend of mine in high school. You, you, you cracked that case. And I always, I've always admired you and respected you for, for doing that. And, and we brought some gifts, because we always bring gifts for our big guests. You're the big guest tonight. You know, you're the special guest. So we have a bunch of different tickets for you. We have tickets for the Canadian Brass Quartet. Frank, can you pick that up? We have tickets for the Boston Pops at, the, at Great Woods. Oh, beautiful. And we also have a BCN hat for you, because he, he should be wearing a BCN hat. So oh, we'll wear a hat. Plus, we have a pair. These are very, very special. These are worth, uh, valued at about $70, a pair of nice Ray-Ban oh, sunglasses. Nice. Oh, Look at those. Oh, those are great. Cause very nice. I've always Always respected in my. I've always wanted to be a, a policeman, Dom. You know, and yeah. I think it was probably because of TV. TV really glamorizes the job. Do you think so? Well, they. Uh, I'm glad they do because there's so many movies. Like I saw a movie the other night, Unlawful Entry. I didn't. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't think that was uh, fair to the police officers, and I wouldn't want to say anything to taint the image of other police mm -hmm. officers. But uh, that did a job on the uh, policeman. But. Uh, I've never heard of any instances where a cop has been that bad. That's a far-fetched kind of a story. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a fantasy. But Lethal Weapon and all those kind of movies. And a little too much. What about Cagney and Lacey? Was that, is that true? Mm -hmm. Does that happen? Two Hill Street yeah. Blues. Any, is any, what's two. the closest TV cop show to real life? In my opinion, yeah. Streets of San Francisco. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I really? think that is the best, that was the best police movie I had ever seen. I mean, it's down to word. They start with the, initi with the initiation of an investigation, mm -hmm. and uh, as a result of their um, uh, investigation, it's culminated by an apprehension of the person. One thing I'd like to say, if I may, you says you that Dom uh, cracked a lot of good cases, mm -hmm. but I'd like to say this is, one police officer cannot work alone. With the assistance of every police officer in our city, who have all contributed to any investigation we undertake in the Detective Bureau, with the information our different brothers and sister police officers give us, we extract from that enough information that we can work real hard and we can bring it all together and make a good arrest. Mm -hmm. But no police officer is an island of his own. Who said that, Tony Bennett? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, but no police officer is an island of his own. We need every bit of help that we can get from every police officer. Mm -hmm. Now I've left the department and 
uh, I've pursued another career. I am a uh, private detective, and uh, I run a detective agency really? now. Yeah, they call it Scalise and Special Services, and I have one of the most charming secretaries anybody could have. And she asked for an increase in pay wages, and I says I'm taking to a show tonight. So my wife is my. <laughs> That's great. But being a policeman, you live the you don't, you you take the job home every night. It's a 24-hour a day job. Right? You were telling me how you used to get calls in the middle yeah. of the night. I mean, that must be, it puts a strain on a personal life for any policeman, right? No, no? I like this. But uh, what about the, like, the, the, your, your wife or other policemen's wives? They must... Well, I'll tell you one thing. I was, when I was a policeman, particularly with the detectives, and I would get a call, I had a division that we'd go out and work, and uh, I was happy to go out and work, and especially if you can start on a case that just took place, you're fresh on that case. But then after a while, I, I used to get kind of selfish, I looked forward to these calls that I could go out at night. Not that I wanted to leave my wife and my children home alone, but then while I was out working on a homicide case or something uh, of grave importance, after a while I would be thinking of my wife. I left them home. They'd be up all night waiting and waiting. Oh, wow. But uh, I knew if, uh, if I got hurt, they'd hear about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it was good. I liked it. But my family stuck with me. And if, if the person is honest on the job, you have nothing to worry about. And you really need a strong stomach for the job, too, right? I've increased it a little well, bit but I mean, since I've retired. See, I mean, I've, you know, the, you know yeah, there's a lot is, of uh, accidents and killings. And, I mean, you've probably seen some gruesome things in your life. The most gruesome one I ever saw was your buddy, yeah. Jerry, uh, oh, Nick is a frail. Yeah, yeah. That was about the worst uh, homicide. And I wasn't actually going to be involved in it, but it happened with the MDC, mm -hmm. and it was... I met one of the police officers in court, John Flynn, and he showed me a picture of a tattoo and asked if I recognized it. I brought it up to Guido's and Joe Chicola's and everybody told me that's who it was. Yeah. Well, we won't want to get into that story and spare the family because the family still lives in Cambridge. And, but anyway, we don't want to end on a sad note. We do want to thank you for coming down. I've always respected and admired you. And, Thanks a lot. And you've had a great career, and the people Peace. of Cambridge <laughs> are really in debt to this guy. He's really a great, great guy. Dominic Scalise, everybody. And that does it for tonight's show. We did it. Clyde, you were an awesome co-host tonight. <laughs> and you, you have three different hats, four different hats in one show. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back next week. John O'Neill will be back. The same old cast and crew, Joe Gallant, and lots of great guests. We want to thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. This is Your Mother's on the Roof. Good night, everybody. Starving, we live right here, and they're tearing down walls.